Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac and I'm going to talk about room acoustics today and what you can do about it. And at the end of this video, I'm going to do a quick music review, so stay tuned to the end. Room acoustics can be a big problem. I mean, you know, anytime I moved and I walked into an, a, a room, uh, an apartment usually, um, I would clap my hands, and when I clap my hands in an empty room, what did I hear beyond, after my hands clapped? Well, I'd hear this, this echo, this nasty whoosh sound. It's like hard slap echo. Of course, it was an empty room, so it was at its worst, but it gave me some indication of where I stood, literally. And, uh, you know, when you put furniture in it and, and a rug on the floor, a lot of that's going to go away. But there's still going to be some echoey, harsh quality to a typical rectangular room. There's standing waves which depending on the construction of the walls and floors can add really t terrible bass resonances that make bass sound boomy. All kinds of problems in typical rooms. So over the years there have been uh, companies that sell uh, panels and uh, bass traps to help you know minimize those things but usually those things are pretty expensive so Last year at the um, Audio Engineering Society show in New York City, I came upon this company called GIK Acoustics. They're in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm looking at their panels and they're like, what is it, $37.50 for a two foot by two foot panel. Uh, bass traps start at uh, $75 for a four inch thick bass trap. They have bass traps that go up to 17 inches thick if you've got really deep, very low bass problem. Um, they have uh, diffusers, those cool looking things you put on the wall that sort of break up uh, reflections, and they start at um, $59 each. So the prices are actually very reasonable. And uh, no one expects you to be an acoustics engineering expert, but they have human beings standing by that you could talk to on the telephone. Remember telephones? And help you talk you through the problems and what you would need to fix them. So anyway, they, they're very nice people. They make them in the US. Uh, they have custom coverings and colors and things uh, and all kinds of options, lots of options. But the main point is if you have a nasty sounding room or even not nasty, but just you think it could be a little better other than doing the obvious things like having a rug in front of your speakers, um, check them out. Now I did a complete slideshow of all their different products in different uh, recording studios and people's homes on my CNET blog and so I will link to them. I'm not, I don't have any pictures here of their products but I have 20 pictures in this slideshow on CNET that I will link to below this video. So as for the music review, well today it is uh, two actually, two scores, There Will Be Blood and The Master, both scores were done by Johnny Greenwood, who's he's the guitar player for or in uh, Radiohead, and um, these scores are really just, you know, it's almost like Bernard Herrmann esque, but transported into the 21st century. They're orchestral, they're stirring. They're not, they're not, they're not lulling you to sleep. They're like punching you. They're getting you in the gut. And I don't just mean with big dynamics. I just mean with. With composition, the scores themselves are edgy. And when I was watching the, the, this movie, There Will Be Blood, which is kind of like a Western, but the score was just, wow. It was just really powerful and emotional and troubling and edgy and put you on, gave you this feeling. That's what scores in movies are supposed to do is signal the viewer as to what to feel. What are you feeling when you're watching this scene? And Johnny Greenwood uh, in these two movies, uh, less so in The Master, but The Master score is still mm, pretty masterful. But the one to start with is There Will Be Blood, which was, by the way, was recorded at Abbey Road, you know, where the Beatles recorded in London. Anyway, it's, and it's a good sounding recording. Um, anyway, that's it for this exciting chapter of the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Uh, please come back often, daily if possible, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.